This is a chart of Calgary's maximum temperatures. For each year in the chart, you're averaging out 365 daily high temperatures. And the scale on the left is in degrees Celsius to get one number for the year. And by doing that, you're masking quite a bit of the variability in temperature in a given year. The years being numbered from one upward, with the first one being 1885. In winter, you might have a high of minus 20 for some of the coldest days. In the summer, your hottest days would typically give you highs of plus 30 or a little more. So already at that point, there's a masking of some of the changes that go on in a year. But after you do the averaging, you can still see that even when all these high numbers of temperatures are averaged out to get a number for the year, there's still a lot of difference between one and the year and the next. What people typically talk about in the media is the presumed average temperature for the whole world that has trends over decades. But that temperature doesn't exist at any one point. Usually the variability we're subjected to is much higher. In the case of Calgary, the one degree temperature or so that we've been presumably exposed to for the last century or so is a small change compared to what occurs from year to year. We usually get at least a degree difference in being either hotter or colder than the year that came before. Also, when you look at the maximum temperatures, there is no trend of increase for the whole century as I see it, because there's an increase up to a peak in 1921, then an overall decrease with many ups and downs contained within it, then another increase to 1987, and then a decrease again. So you essentially have a large cycle with many reversals, ups and downs, buried within it. And the two peaks occur 66 years apart. This is of possible interest because there's an 11 year cycle in the activity of the sun in terms of sunspots and solar flares. And there's a significant literature of how these things affect the Earth. Presumably there is a relationship between how active the sun is in terms of solar flares and sunspots and how cloudy the atmosphere is and how solar energy coming toward the Earth is used. These cycles are used to predict wet and dry years in advance, and according to the authors of some of these papers that have to do with the subject, it can be done with a high degree of reliability and is quite useful for getting an outlook a year or two ahead of just what the wet years and the dry years are likely to be.